Greetings, every people! This is your cult personality here, Toon Critic's name, Toon's name of my game. Welcome back to Roundtable's Magic, little show where we occasionally review My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, but today. Bliss, are you serious? <laughs> serious! I didn't do it! I didn't do it! I swear! That wasn't me! Go to the box! I swear it wasn't me! I can't just, even get just... one of these where we're not interrupt. Okay, whatever. We are doing a special thing to um, to sort of um, fill the gap between Season 6 and 7. We have a special interview episode here for you guys. So, first off, joining me is Golden Fox. Hi. Lightning Bliss. Hi. Voice of Reason. What's up? And our very, very special guest for today. You may have heard him on several different shows, including Lego Ninjago, Death Note, and the Ratchet and Clank movie. And, of course, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. He is the voice of Flash Sentry. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vincent Tong. Yo, what's up, everybody? Yep. Firstly, thank you, sir, for coming on to this. We are very honored to have you here on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. All right. So... I believe you do not need an introduction, but for those who are unaware of you, please tell us what is it that you do. Uh, I am a, uh, I'm an actor. I'm a voice actor. Um, I guess you guys probably know me from the the My Little Pony voices that I do. Yeah. Which are um, Flash Sentry, the Equestria Girls, uh, Prince Blue Blood, of course. <laughs> Royalty. Oh. Oh, yeah. Tablet got introduced second. Um, a garbled dragon, as well as a Donna Joe or Pony Joe, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's um, something I didn't know. Pony, uh, Donna Joe does not get enough love, honestly. Oh, he doesn't, yeah. I swear. He just should just get hugged everywhere. There should be merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> So, let us get this started. So, as a voice actor, where did the inspiration to become a voice actor come from? Basic question, but, you know, just to sort of, you know, warm up here. Um, it's, it's kind of weird. I, I, I always, as a kid, I did tons of impersonations of things, like, um, like, uh, like the Ninja Turtles. I used to love watching. That was, like, my favorite cartoon as a kid. Oh, man. Yeah. You know? Uh, you my know? childhood. Uh -huh. Right? And, like... Yeah. Uh, Muppet Babies. Hey, hey, Miss Piggy. Or not Miss Piggy at that point, I guess. It was just Piggy. <laughs> like, Bobby's World, which is like Howie Mandel's first cartoon. He, he voiced Bobby. It was a pretty cool show. And I just used to love just imitating people and imitating cartoons that I saw. And um, and then I did I did musical theater forever. I went to school. I went to uh, the Canadian College of Performing... <laughs> My hearts, there is. I'm like the Canadian Blood Services is calling me. I tried to ignore them on my phone, but it's you know, it's all connected. So <laughs> I fine. will be loved another day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, it's fine, dude. Don't worry about awesome. it. Awesome. All right. Um. Yeah. Don't call me ever again. Canadian Blood Services. <laughs> oh, we're with my old kerfuffle. All right. Um, yeah, so I was, you know, singing or like, dancing for a while and uh, different theatrical shows, the few musicals. That was fun, you know? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love theater? <laughs> What's that? I know, right? I, I was saying, like, who doesn't love the theater? Who doesn't love the theater? The theater's where the stars are born, where real acting comes. You need gumshoot, kid, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did, I did theater for a while. I did, um, I did the, my first professional job at the theater was at Stage West Mississauga in Ontario, right by Toronto. And it was the Canadian premiere of Footloose, mm. um, a musical. And I played ensemble number seven. And um, I had to wear a little cowboy hat and cowboy boots. Classy. <laughs> 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 yeah! <laughs> very, very classy. Yeah. But um, to get back to your question, I did theater, musical theater forever, and I've always wanted to do cartoon work. I just thought it'd be really fun to be a cartoon character. I didn't really know if there was, you know, if you can make a career out of it. I didn't know anything about the, um, the celebrity kind of the most uh, working people in Hollywood, like these voice actors like James and Earl Taylor, uh, Maurice LaMarche. 
Phil Lamar, all those guys, like I didn't know about them. I just thought, hey, those they're just people. I didn't know who they were. Uh, so when I came back to Vancouver after a like stint in Toronto doing musicals, I put together a demo and I pitched it out to different um, different agents. Finally got a really good agent, and the rest is sort of history. All right. So Fox, you have your question. Hopefully you remember it because it's like written right there on the sheet. <laughs> That you're hopefully looking at, and you're hopefully here, and Fox. He dropped. He dropped. Oh, did he? Dr oh. <laughs> Starbucks crapped out on me again. No, the the chin. He actually is. He is at a Starbucks in his car right now. Oh, he's really? using the Starbucks Wi-Fi from there. Okay, okay you know what? I'll get back to him. I'll get back to him. Yeah. I'll just um, I'll do voices question. Okay. Um. Oh wait, I'll no, he's back. back. Oh, never mind. Okay, he's there. back. Uh, Fox, are okay. you still there? Uh, yes, I'm still here. Okay, your question oh. is up. Okay, so my question, and... I just tweeted you, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what so is your my question? question is, which role in your career have you been proud of the most? Very simple. Um, probably uh, most proud of. The, the cartoon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I, you know, I, I always go back to like Kai and Ninjago. I really enjoy that that part and that role. Um, but I guess the most proud is a show that probably a lot of people don't even know. It's called Packages from Planet X. It played uh -huh. on Disney XD for a little bit. It only went for one season, but it was really the the beginning of, I guess, my career. I guess I did some other cartoons before that, but this was my first lead in a show, and. Um, I played Dan Zabrowski, and he was this crazy kid uh, that would get all these alien packages from Planet X, and only he could open it. And he just gets into all this trouble with it because he doesn't think uh, anything through. He just wants to try out these packages. And that show was sort of like the beginning of, of what I have really worked hard for. I, I, I kind of looked up to a lot of voice actors in Vancouver for a, a few years and go, okay, why are these guys working and why am I not? And just really studying them and, and whenever I got a chance to be in the studio, just kind of studying them and, and, and trying to emulate what is, what, what, do, what do they have? What kind of charisma do they have? What kind of like reads do they have when they audition? And I really like worked my butt off to try to get a lead part because I was playing sort of sub, sub characters. So that when I got that show, I got, I got the lead for the pilot, recorded the pilot, Lost the pilot to one of my like cartoon idols over here, Sam Vincent, uh -huh. and he's the one of the guys that I would you know emulate and and watch all the time. And then he got it, and then he recorded the pilot, and then I recorded the pilot again. The pilot gets picked up, gets greenlit, and they're like, "Congrats, Vincent got greenlit, awesome!" So we want to see you for an audition for this part. I'm like, "Oh my god." I just went through all that freaking maru, and you want me to audition again? So then I had to audition again against like ten to fifteen other uh, young, awesomely talented people in Vancouver, and uh, I was just super thrilled and happy to have booked that job. All right. Yeah. Voice, your question is up. All right. Um. Now, last year, um, when the Ratchet and Clank movie got announced, I actually did see it in theaters. And nice. going through, then going through the names, I saw, wait, Vi like, who's playing all the uh, voice actors? I see Vincent Tong plays Brax. Like, I know that guy. <laughs> I know him. He's done a thing with the ponies. Yes, that's right. So uh, my question was, how excited were you when you found out you were one of the supporting cast members for the Ratchet and Clank movie? My gosh, let me tell you, that was a weird one. Playing Brax was a bit of an unexpected turn. So the story goes for Brax. So what we do um, sometimes, and we do this in Canada, we do this in the States as well, um, is a thing called scratch tracks. And what scratch tracks are is that you, you scratch the track in so the animators can start drawing because they don't have their full cast yet. Usually this happens when there's celebrities involved and when they know there's going to be celebrities involved. So I had gone in along with like Brian Dobson, Brian Drummond, Michael Adams, Wade, Tabitha St. Germain, uh, Brad Swale, a bunch of people up here. And we scratched a lot of these 
uh, roles. And I came in for, I did a bunch of Ratchet and Clank already for like these sub characters. And then they gave me Brax. And I'm like, oh, I think I read for this guy, but I didn't get it because he's this big dude. I'm, and I don't sound very big. So then I went in and, and they're like, yeah, so it's, it's just a scratch, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, that's fine. So, you know, I'm trying to talk down as low as I can to do this character. I'm trying to make him big, you know what I'm saying? And um, I had a lot of fun with Kevin Monroe, the, the director. He's an awesome director, super fun. And, and uh, just really, he, I felt like he dug what I was doing. So, um, so then we go on and the, the trailer comes out and I'm like, that sounds like my voice. This is so weird. I think he has one line in the, in the trailer. I think it was, a, I think it was um, uh, can we uh, can we shoot something right now or something or something we're shooting again. Yeah. And and then um, and then I get this check like in the mail like six months after I recorded it saying it's a buyout for the 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 Brax part. I'm like. Why am I getting a buyout? This is going to be a celebrity of some sort. And then I call my agent. I'm like, does this mean I have the part? He's like, yup. I'm like, what? I didn't really um, but it I may have been an internal thing. Yeah, internal until I peep. Um, <laughs> but uh, awesome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was crazy, and I still did not want to believe it because I don't like getting my hopes up. I just don't like to get crushed. By my own expectations. So I literally did not, I, I sort of scoped out the web for any hints that it was my name and, and nothing showed up until Kevin Monroe, the director, tweeted a picture and tagged James Arnold Taylor, uh, David Kay, who plays Ratchet and Clank, and then Vincent Tong, who plays Brax. And I'm like, what the heck? And I still didn't want to believe it because I'm like, the movie could come out, they could have found some money and and paid some celebrity to do it. And so I really didn't want to believe it until I was sitting in the theater and I heard my voice. I was like, oh my gosh, that's me, that's my voice. And I was like, <laughs> and Yeah, because I recognize a couple of voices. I know Tabitha voiced, I think it was the mother on the cell phone. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Uh, bit yeah. of a bonus question, if I may ask. Are you familiar with the uh, Ratchet and Clank at all? Did you play the games before, or was it just sort of a oh, of... here's a voice thing? I guess I'll do this. You no, know, I definitely have heard of the game. I definitely have heard of it because it's a huge game, especially from my era. I've never. I only had one console that was given to me when that was an Xbox One. No, it wasn't an Xbox One. It was an Xbox Three. No, no, no. I think it was Xbox One. This is how much I know about console games. <laughs> Oh, yes, the Nintendos and the Pokemons. I know, I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah, I was given one of those things. I, I don't think, I think PS4 is, uh, I mean, Ratchet & Clank is a PS4 game, right? Yeah, it's been on the PlayStation 2 for, like, a lot of the games, then the PS3, I, and then the PS4, so. See, I, yeah, it's gonna, I think it's going to be, it's like, 25th this year? Yes. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I did not. I did not play it, but I definitely knew about it. And I knew that there were other like little movies of Ratchet & Clank before. So I was like thrilled just to be, I mean, James Arnold Taylor is one of my, my heroes in, in, uh, in voice. Oh, same. So to be in a movie with him, it's just, it's bonkers. So, I mean, we never got to work with each other. And I don't even think, I mean, Sylvester Stallone and, and uh, Paul Giamatti, Rosario Dawson, Bell Thorne, they never recorded together. They all were just recorded separately. And so what they did was with those scratch tracks is they would watch our tracks with the animation that's already been animated. And they would do basically what you do in ADR or like dubbing. And they would dub over our, our tracks and watch like for lip flaps on the screen. Mm. So that's how, mm. that's how it's made. That's how it's done. A little bit of behind the scenes stuff there. Yeah, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I was absolutely thrilled. And, and you know, at the very end, they had those little name placards that came up at the end of the movie. Yeah. Oh, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to have one. And then Sylvester Stallone and then Paul Jumon. I'm like, no, they just blew past all the good guys. And then I was like, oh, my character, Bits and Talk. Literally, my friends went berserk. They started <laughs> screaming and standing up. It was so much fun. I was so blown away. I was just so thankful. <laughs> so, so grateful. All right. Liz, you're up next. Okay, um, this is just a uh, out of the box question. All right. Um, 
What do you typically do in your spare time when you're not voice acting? Well, you can Skype me later. We can talk about that, right? I'm married. (laughs) (laughs) You can bring him or her along, too. No, I'm joking. (laughs) That's a very personal question. (laughs) Oh, dude, Flash said she just flirted with you. How do you feel? (laughs) I know we're doing this live right now. Chat, I know we have some artists there. Can we get some fan art of that, please? Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, Flash Century just flirting with Lightning Bliss. <laughs> oh, that's the best moment here. Nothing's going to beat that. Anyway, to the question. I apologize. Time. We still got time. <laughs> well, but all uh, seriousness, like though. What do I do in my spare time when I'm not voice acting? Well, I do do acting... Um, on screen as well, so sometimes I'll have voice, uh, some some TV and film stuff uh, going on, auditions, if not some gigs. I booked a really cool, I think I can talk about it, um, uh, it's a movie, I don't know where it's going to be played, it's called Cop and a Half 2, and uh, mm-hmm. I did um, just a small little part in, uh, in this movie with Lou Diamond Phillips, it was super fun, and um, got to do a fight scene too, and he, I, there was a stunt double on there, but he wanted to do the fights as well, so he was... It was uh, it was fun. I got to fight Lou Diamond Phillips. Um, yeah, it's, it's really fun. It's really neat. And um, yeah, but I, I like to keep physical. I like to do a lot of sports. And um, rock climbing is my new thing right now. So nice <laughs> indoor gym over here in Vancouver, where I go and climb some rocks with some ropes, and sometimes without ropes, doing the bouldering for those climbers who know what that actually means. Um, and uh, yeah, I do jujitsu, and in the summertime I play frisbee, and uh, I ride motorcycles. So sometimes I'll just do little, you know, treks here and there. Manly things. Manly things, you know. Oh, and I took a bar class the other day. That's very manly as well. Where it's a <laughs> you guys know what bar class is? Uh, for those that don't know. For those who don't know, bar class is derivative of the ballet bar. Ah. And it's a- an hour class of uh, just repetitive ballet movements in a more a quickened pace so that you get more of a burn and more of a workout and you get your cardiovascular going as well. But it's a killer workout. And I'm, I'm not a, I'm a guy who really skips leg day. I yeah. don't work out at all. So I feel you. Doing these, these plies and grand plies and, and uh, tendus and bondus at, just at a rapid pace, it's, it's exhausting. For those of who know those ballet terms, um, but it was an awesome class, and she was—I think she was quite surprised to see a guy in there too. But I was like, "Whatever, this is fun. This is great. This is a great workout." That's like good exercise, yeah. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. All right, so back to me. Uh, now, Flash Sentry. Uh, if you don't know, like in the fandom, he's become sort of a interesting character to not only talk about and discuss, but there's been a recurring joke with him, and I've been asked by quite a few people because they knew I was going to be interviewing you, so I might as well just get this question out of the way. How many waifus have you stolen? Uh, you had to ask that question. <laughs> Literally, I... like, seven people were asking me, not just today, but also yesterday, too. Oh, wow. I I sort of lost track. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it gets to a number, well, right? In the beginning, you sort of count. You're on your fingers. You're on your toes. You know, and then you just kind of lose count. <laughs> I got to say, man, you, you are a really good sport with this. Because, man, <laughs> this complaint is just beyond ridiculous. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Oh, it, is, it is depending, like... Uh, I'll get to that when, um, next question. But actually, okay, here's my real question. That was a joke. Uh, real <laughs> question. How do you feel about Flash's character throughout the Equestria Girls series, if, like, you watch? Because I know some voice actors, like, just, you know, sort of just do the track and then just move on. But there's some that actually, like, you know, notice and pay attention to their characters and whatnot. So how do you feel about, uh, Flash? Um, I really dig Flash. I think... I, I, I've always liked Flash. I thought he was... Uh, he, he reminds me of me. I would like to say in high school, but I think that kind of awkwardness that that Flash has still surrounds me. 
Um, so I, I kind of relate to this dude who, who just tries to, to be a good guy and a nice guy, and he's working up his courage in every single Equestria Girls to kind of talk to Twilight and, and, and ask about her and always seems to get shut down. Not because, you know, he's a, no one likes him. It's just these awkward uh, circumstances that, that occur with Twilight. But I really dig the guy. And, and it was a very interesting uh, question. I think it was in Dallas, was it? Or in Milwaukee. No, it was in Milwaukee. And Katrina... Who does? Who's a, a a director on the Equestria Girls movies? They had this big co- conversation within the the animators, and one of the I think it was a layout artist. I'm not sure. I forget her name, but she said Flash is a great example to a lot of young men out there because he will pursue what he wants, but. Because Twilight says no, he never forces it. He never forces himself upon her. He understands limitations and he respects the wishes of Twilight, you know? And I, I, I was like, wow, that, that's a great encompassing idea of Flash because this guy who a lot of the, the fandom hates, but if you look a bit deeper into this dude, he's just trying to be a good, good guy and, and, you know, trying to talk to a girl that he likes. And, and even though he shuts him down he doesn't get pissed off he doesn't like talk poorly of her and he doesn't force himself repetitively on her he just kind of respects the boundaries and kind of goes with the flow and and for that i totally i was like wow that's a great um i guess perspective that you can have of flash century it's a much needed perspective i think Mm -hmm. there's there's been uh all sorts of different perspectives on him whether they're they agree with him or they're really against him and uh, fox was supposed to oh wait never mind he's here okay his starbucks wi-fi is acting up <laughs> you still there yep yeah, i'm finally back okay. yeah i'm still here okay your question is up the uh the backlash question Oh, yes. Um, I'm actually going to have, like, two questions, because one of which is for my girlfriend, who would also sure. do this podcast, but she was unable to join. So, my question is, have you been aware of the massive backlash of Flash Century? And if so, what's your take on it? Um, uh, the, the backlash of Flash Century. They've, I was called very him, cool. they've called him a, what some character tropes are called, like a Mary Sue, like he's perfect, he doesn't have any flaws, he's, he's gonna steal your waifu away, then and then people turn it into a meme, and then it just went all over the place, so. Hmm. Yeah, um, and there are some people who say that Flash Century was supposed to be a one-joke character, and so on and so forth. But he clearly right. is not now, so what is your take on that? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, at first I was, uh, well, when I knew about this fandom, um, and I think I was going to my first con and I was excited. Oh no, no, my second con, I think, because Flash wasn't out then. And I was just super excited that this guy, this Flash Century guy is going to come out. And then when I went online to check out what people thought about him, I was, I was very sad because people hated him. I was like, oh, crap, what the heck just happened? Um, so it was very, very funny. I actually went on to a, 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 a live forum. I forget what it was for. They were celebrating something. And I went on this forum where people were watching the Equestria Girls movie. And you could, like, live, uh, I don't know what you would call Interact it, with the live chat, stream? basically. Yeah, live chat, basically. So, um... Whenever Flash Century came on, this one dude, I think, just copy and paste, like, over and over again, over and over (laughs) again. And, and like, every single frame that Flash was in, that would happen. So it was very discouraging and disheartening at first. But what do I think about it personally now? I don't care. I really don't care. Everyone has their own opinion. Everyone is uh, allowed their own opinion and they can think what they want i think flash is a cool dude and he has dropped great hair just like me yeah <laughs> exactly like the dude has like some killer hair right yeah <laughs> have you seen the action figure his abs are killer not like that <laughs> <laughs> um i also would like to add something about uh people complaining about calling flash sentry the waifu dealer Go i don't know it. if you're familiar with the term waifu 
or not? I had to look it up. Okay, uh, basically, it's it's based on a fan fiction interpretation where, uh, like, somebody creates their own character in their own personal fantasy, and they have a connection with the character. And a lot of people felt connected with Twilight Sparkle. So, since Flash Century had somewhat of a connection with Twilight in the first Sequestered Girls movie, a lot of people got flailing in arms and started calling Flash Century a waifu stealer. And mm-hmm. just, like, my argument with that is, it's pretty shallow, and it's pretty sad if that's how you picture Flash Century, because, first off, it's not your show, it's not your franchise, you have no right to go saying that. Yeah. And second... Mm-hmm. Yeah, if that's basically it. It's it's a simple argument that people like try to throw out there and it's such a shallow one. So I, I just yeah. I wanted to get that off my chest. Um I appreciate anything it. Anything else yeah, anything else you have on that question or are you ready for the next one? No, I mean I think everyone is definitely allowed their own uh opinion. And for me, you don't have to convince me of anything either way. I have my own thoughts on him, and I think he's a great character. I think he's a great guy. I see a lot of uh, myself in Flash, um, just like that awkward, nerdy dude that's trying to be cool, but he's yeah. not really, you know? Dude, like, yeah, I have absolute respect for this answer that you have provided. So um, if, if you're ready, I have another question to ask. Sure. Okay, this one was from my girlfriend. And she's getting enrolled into some voice work along with some vo- uh, singing. And this one is in regards to the Christmas album. How do you feel having your own song about um, having a call for Christmas? And how did you come up with your voice for it? Oh, that's a, that's a cool question. Because no one ever asks about that album or even yeah, knows. It's like, I got a call for Christmas. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's verbatim. Um, that... The okay, so Daniel and I became good friends in New York. We went to a convention together in New York, and we sort of became buds there. And and then we would rock rock climb over here and just kind of hang out. And um, he uh, asked me to sing on the album, and he didn't know who this character was going to be. He was like, "I wrote this song, but we don't know who's going to sing it." And wanted to see if he wanted to give it a shot. I said, "Sure." And uh, he's like this little bratty kid. So when I think about bratty kids, I just sort of think about this guy. And he's, you know, <laughs> kind of like this kid. Just like, doesn't like brush his teeth. He always like sticks pens in his teacher's pockets and seat. You know? <laughs> and, and, and so I kind of came up with that voice. Uh, it was very hard to sing like that because your vocal cords are so pinched at that point. And then singing even higher kind of... Uh, you stretch your vocal cords even more. So it was a bit arduous, but such a fun song and such a great, great lyrics and great, great, um, it's a great song. And to be, absolutely. To be part of that album, I was so honored that he would ask me. It was just a bit of a bummer in the, in the fact that they didn't really credit me in a, in a way, like on, on iTunes. No one, no one knows I did. No one knows that I did. Oh, oh, that's a real bummer. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I could feel your pain right there, because yeah. that album, like, not gonna lie, that album was very fun to listen to. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, um, I also wanted to add on to that. Uh, I know you also did a cover with, I believe, Black Griffin for a Christmas special as well. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, with the Creepers and um, yeah, it was like a little YouTube thing we did for charity. It was like a track that we did for. Um, for Christmas, and and I think Monique Krieber, Michelle Krieber, Black Griffin, Shan Shan Kent, Andrew Libin, Rebecca Shoykit, and I were on it, and uh, Michael Krieber did all the arrangements and the orchestration behind it, and it was great. It was wonderful. They they just asked which song would you would like to sing, and we would sing like a verse and a chorus, and they blended it all together. We did it all in one night at the the Brian Adams Studio, and. Yeah, it was super fun. Those guys are so mega talented. So it was, it was a pleasure singing with them. All right. And, and uh, yeah, um, Black Griffin helped me with the riffs because he's a, he's a good riffer. And I was like so scared to start riffing. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you did great in it, personally. Thanks. I owe it yeah. to him. 
<laughs> so shifting off of My Little Pony, now dipping a little bit a bit to something I think that is more mainstream. That um, actually the movie for this is coming up, Lego Ninjago. Um, mm. Yeah, the trailer for the movie is about to drop um, tomorrow. Um, looks like it's going to be pretty good, and Lego Batman is coming out this weekend. So I want you to tell us a little bit more about um, Lego Ninjago, specifically, um, I guess, sort of how did you first get into it, and did you ever grow up with Legos at all? Well, the story of Lego Ninjago goes <laughs> many centuries. <laughs> Way back to 2009. Um, I think, I don't know. That was a <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, so Ninjago, it was a really, really neat audition. Um, I auditioned at the studio, I remember, for this untitled cartoon. We didn't know what it was, and um, there was four different characters, and I auditioned for all of them. And then when I was in Victoria doing a theater show, I get a call saying that I got this pilot so I was like sweet who would i get and you got kai i'm like kai that's the red ninja and originally the red ninja had like on the specs where I, when i auditioned he had red hair and freckles and i'm like oh cool that's cool i guess and um and we did a pilot and we didn't know it was lego until we got into the room and started recording it and then they didn't know what they were going to do with it, if it was going to be in a movie or a TV series. They did, had no idea. So they did this little mini movie that was like two episodes. And then from then on, I think once it was out there on Cartoon Network, it just kind of blew up and the kids loved it. So it's been an awesome ride. I've been so blessed to play Kai for so many years. I think we've, we're going on six years now with this wow. show. Yeah, and um, yeah, just such a blessing. And uh, I went to the San Diego Comic Con last summer to represent Lego with uh, Ninjago as well as Nexo Knights. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the um, so the tr the trailer to the movies coming out. Yes, I believe it's supposed to debut tomorrow, and I think they're doing like a movie version of like uh, the Ninjago, not like the show, but like a movie version of it, like different universe or whatever. Totally, yeah, and. Uh, did you see who's voicing it? Um, last I checked, it was different people, but I could be wrong. Not us! <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask me to come back. I see how it is. No, it's, 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 um, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, uh, it's not us voicing it. It's going to be a little weird then for people who eventually you watch them and they're like, wait a minute, those aren't the voices from the show. What's going on here? Yeah, I know. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I hope it, I hope it's successful because I, I think any, any success is going to be good for, for the cartoon series. And we'll see how the fans react because uh, there's been different reactions from some diehard, you know, Ninjago fans who've been watching it since, they were, you know, six years ago. So they could be like 12 by now. And yeah. they're like, dude, they're like ruining my childhood. Like, honestly, I remember when I was watching Ninja Turtles or like any any of the cartoons that I used to watch as a kid. And then when they would change the voices, I knew it. And I was like, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't sound like the, the characters that I knew and grew up with. And it would always throw me. Like Kermit the Frog went through a change when Jim, Jim Henson passed away. And I was like, oh, this just doesn't sound the same anymore. Right. So... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back to I think a previous sort of thing. As did you grow up with Legos at all? Oh yeah, I love Legos. I had like yeah. the, those like yeah. pins of Lego. I was like, I was born in the days when you could get a Lego packet at McDonald's with your Happy Meal, <laughs> and and they were. I mean, literally. If you had a brick that had more than little six nubs on it, it was a it was a bonus day. <laughs> uh, I grew up with Lego too. Also, apparently, um, someone actually did draw a flash flirting with lightning bliss. Um, that one Kaliso did in the chat. Um, oh no! If you'd like to see, the link is right there. <laughs> oh no! Uh, it's great. Uh... How can I see it? Uh, it's in the Skype chat here. It's the uh, the first link right here. You're in a Skype chat here. What? 
No, okay, in the sky, in this group chat here, um, there's a Found stash it. link. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. I am not coming out of my room. Oh wait. <laughs> You're already in your room. I I have never I have never come in on round table again. I have been shamed. Oh come on. <laughs> I mean, I okay, him. fine, bliss, bliss. If you don't want him, I'm always open. So I'm married. I know you're married. <laughs> this oh, smack you upside the head, Zach. <laughs> you guys, what do you think would what do you think would go on in this Skype conversation? You guys are sick. <laughs> you talking about like lawn bowling. <laughs> you guys, you. Oh jeez. <laughs> no, I don't know what y'all are talking about. I I am a professional at all times. I am very appropriate and I yeah, y'all y'all are gross. Right, right, okay. Yeah, you guys are really gross. Grow up, Zach, the little voice, my god. Yeah. Uh. Alright, alright. Um in all in all, ser in all seriousness though, uh do you like the art? I, I like the art. I love the art. That's really quick art that looks great. And All I right. love I love that I say I show you. Not even I'll show you, but I show you <laughs> I am not a princess chat. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, shut up. Just because uh, I'm an alcorn does uh, not make me a princess. Anyways, um anyway. Yes, uh voice, your question is up. Alright, now I know you've had a, a wide variety of roles from Flash to Brack. So my question was, what was the most challenging role that you that you voiced? Right. Um, let me go on my IMDb right now. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is I did a, a video game called Shank. And, ah, yes. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. And man, it was like, down here, it was all gravelly. And I made the, the really big mistake of kind of going out that night and not sleeping in my... Oh, this is going to sound bad. My own bed. But I, I just slept over at my buddies. And I came out from, from San Diego, and I just crashed on, at, in their hotel room uh, downtown. So I just didn't have a good rest. And the next day, I did that, which would be fine. But then I had to do these, like, sand guys that were even more gravelly. They wanted them to sound like this. And I'm like, you're killing me, man. You sound so, like the Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, Bliss, why don't you just Skype me already? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if you make me blush anymore, I'm going to be redder than Zach. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, uh. I did. Uh, okay, I'm gonna kill Uncle Jasper in the chat. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continuing on. Continuing on. Yeah, continue. <laughs> continuing on. Um, yeah, you know what? It's it's vocally the most challenging. Vocally is 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 always uh, video games, and I think you can ask any voice actor; they'll tell you the same. Because they need you to to scream and die and be lit on fire, and you shot with a poison arrow like seven different ways and you have to do it progressively louder and more yellier and more murdery <laughs> as you go along. And it's it's awful. It just like shreds your, your vocal cords. Oh yeah, this this that yeah, this is definitely a vocal cord killer right here. <laughs> Actually a quick follow up question. Are you following the, the performance matters thing that they're doing with uh, the SAG Afro in Los Yeah. Yeah, I, I am, yeah. I mean I think I don't, I'm not sure if they've resolved it yet, but all the points that they brought up were very valid and I think should be put in place for the protection of um, the actors and as well as for the production to, to just look after their, their people. And, and um, yeah, I think they definitely should implement those new clauses in the agreement. Hmm. All right. Okay, uh, I believe, Bliss, you are up next. I'm scared to ask. Don't be <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Take my hand. We'll go to another place. Take my hand. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Then jump. No. I can fly. <laughs> you can fly. Oh, yeah, I can true. fly. 
fly. <laughs> you can fly. You can fly. Yeah. You'd be uh, useless in Aladdin. You'd like diss Aladdin so hard. <laughs> He's got his magic carpet. He wants you to come. He's like, you trust me. Come on. You're like, I can fly. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. I'm going to rephrase my question a little bit here. Okay, if you didn't go into voice acting, what would you would have liked to gone into instead? Uh, well, I guess acting is sort of a, the same sort of question. I, I, when I was a kid, I, I loved drawing. I, I wanted to become maybe an architect. Ah. Or, um, oh, okay. Yeah, or, or, or teaching. I really enjoy teaching. Um, either, you know, when you're in school, I told my my. my guidance counselor or like you're they're just trying to like help you decide what you want to do with your career with your life and and um what is this and um and so <laughs> yeah they made another one <laughs> Holy cow, how fast did this happen? Uh, you don't understand. Like, I've been doing this podcast for months, and when I say, get me fan art of this, usually in, like, ten minutes, somebody shows up like, here you go, Mr. Tootser. I'm like, well, this is perfect. Thank you. This is ridiculous. I forgot what I was talking about. You were talking about being an architect. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And being, oh, yeah. So, so yeah, talking to the guidance counselors, I was just very, they always said, I want to be an actor. They're like, okay, but seriously, what do you actually want to be? And so they would be like, maybe you can teach acting, maybe you can get a Bachelor of Arts and in, in, in teach English or teach drama. And um, that's sort of what I was told to do. And I did, I did uh, uh, two years of college, university, and I took every ology in the world, psychology, sociology, biology, uh, philosophy, all these crazy courses that I had a little bit of interest in, but not so much to actually get a degree in. So. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I really don't know what else I'm actually even good at, but I know I'm, I think I'm pretty good at doing what I'm doing right now, and, and I'm really loving what I'm doing right now, so, uh, I hope it continues. All right. Yeah, you, you sound like you have a lot of fun, I mean. <laughs> I do, I You're really do. sound like a big goofball, I love it. <laughs> Oh, that's the right, thing, you know, you when do. when we come to these sort of podcasts, we just like to have a fun, chill time, a lot of laughs, as, you know, we've we've uh, been having throughout this. You know, it's it's a chill thing. We're not at a convention. We're just a couple guys, like, in a podcast, just having fun. That's how I like to have things on here. We're yeah. up. Um, Fox, did Key have any other questions? Because I have one last question to finish this off. Um, I don't think so. Really? All right. Uh, yeah. I guess to uh, neatly finish this off, what advice do you give to um, other voice actors that many may not have heard of? Because there's always like the usual advice, but what's what's one big personal piece of advice that has stuck with you? Mm, for like voice actors? Yes. Mm -hmm. And just and you in general, like what's one that's stuck with you? Oh. I know, I think everyone's heard a, a lot of the old adages before, but I think a, a big one that that has to, to do with voice acting, but as well as just uh, in life, is just to be a good person. Just to be nice and kind to each other and, and gracious and grateful for every opportunity and not take things for granted and just be a good person. It really shows um, who you are and it really shows in your work and people in this town because it's so small we work with the same people over and over again and people know who everybody is so if you start to have a bad attitude people know about it even though you're mega talented you might not get in the room the next time because it's of attitude and that's not saying that you you got a brown nose because people can see right through that as well, you know, trying to just suck up to people and, and kind of inflate other egos to, to get ahead. People can see right through that. Oh, yeah. But just to be genu genuinely a hard worker and to be kind to one another and be grateful that you're there, never take it for granted. And I think that that has to do with just life in general, just to be grateful every day that, you know, especially us, I'm assuming we all live in North America. We're very, very lucky to, to live in, in these this environment and, and to have 
freedoms that we have and we can't take that for granted i know there's been a big shift in 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 america right now but we have to really just take care of one another and just be good good to each other and that's a very good sound piece of advice to go with there okay uh by the way uh are you okay with answering a few questions in like the post show like when this is done recorded sure Okay, cool. So that nicely wraps up the, this lovely little podcast. Uh, thank you, first off, Vincent, for joining us on. This is a huge honor. No problem, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. All right. So if you've been watching this, go ahead and follow us on Twitch. This is where we, of course, do um, our roundtables and um, my game streams. And, yeah, as always, just like, come subscribe, all that good fun stuff. Uh, thank you for watching, and stay awesome.